Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Hot Rod Workshop. Today, we're going to have a short discussion of the two most important carburetors in traditional hot rodding. That is the Stromberg 97 and the Holly 94. So the story with these two carburetors is the Stromberg 97 on your left was Ford's OEM equipment on the Ford flathead engine after the Detroit lubricator. So with Ford's new 24 stud flathead engine in development, they were looking for a new carburetor that was much more efficient than its predecessor. So a company by the name of Chandler Groves came up with the original design for the 94 carburetor. Ford granted Chandler Groves a one-year contract to provide the entire carburetor production for their engines in exchange for the patent rights on the carburetor. Whoa! Bad idea. So, of course, after a year was up, Ford went looking for a new company to produce their carburetors for much, much cheaper. You know, in comes Holly. Holly already had a relationship with Ford through the distributors and whatnot. And here you go, the Holly 94 carburetor. One more reason why Ford was kind of a jerk. So, the question at hand, is one carburetor better than the other? And the answer lies in what type of engine you're putting it in, and what type of driving you're doing. So if we were discussing a 1940 Ford pickup truck with a bone stock flathead engine, the Holly 94 would be the better choice of the two purely for drivability and economical reasons. Now, naturally, hot rodders are going to modify their engines to go faster. It's kind of the whole deal. Sooner or later, one carburetor is no longer going to cut it, thus the advent of multi-carbs. This is where most of the problems start between the Stromberg 97 and the Holly 94. Now, for explanation purposes, we're going to dissect some two fresh out of the dirt uh, cores of the Holly 94 and the Stromberg 97. Now, from this perspective, you'll see that each carburetor is very, very identical. Each has similar choke operation. You have your set screw for your idle. The only real difference from this perspective you'll notice is that the accelerator pump on the Stromberg has external linkage as opposed to the Holly, which is all enclosed outside of this connection here. Bringing it in a little closer here with the accelerator pumps, you'll notice that the Stromberg has two positions for the lower connecting point of your accelerator pump. One is marked W for winter, the other is marked S for summer. And that's just for a little bit more enrichment in the colder, denser air. Holly has a similar setup with this linkage here. It has three holes for three different settings. One, I guess, just a medium, but they both perform the same. All right, so we got both tops removed from the carburetors, Stromberg 97 on the left, Holly 94 on the right, and you'll see a lot of similarities. Here's your main Venturis. Your accelerator pump is in the center of the Stromberg where it's on the left-hand side here on this Holly. Now with both carburetors open up like this, you'll notice that there is a large difference between the floats. The Stromberg needle and seat operates horizontally with the float inside the bore of the bowl, whereas the Holly float, the mechanism is involved with the top, the cap, and the needle and seat operates vertically, up and down. Now, there is some debate whether which is better. There has been stories told that this mechanism isn't the best regarding circle track racing or any type of circuit racing where there's a lot of lateral movement with the car, this could affect 
this could in, in effect give you a starvation or a flooding scenario based on the lateral g-forces of the car when it boils down to it how fast you go in that corner without hitting the wall i, I really don't think it's going to cause that much of an issue now you'll notice the difference between the two sprayer nozzles right above the venturis and this is the claim to fame with the holly over the stromberg is that this is a much more efficient design much better sprayers for the correct atomization of the fuel to the air Another compare and contrast between the two carburetors is the jet location, the main jet location. And on the Holly, the jets are inside the bowl, right up against this face, this wall here, and you have to access them through these screws on the side of the bowl. You use them as a drain, and you insert your screwdriver in here to remove and replace the jets. Whereas the Stromberg, they are external and you don't have to remove anything to get to them. They're still a pain to get to whether, you know, if you have a multi-carb scenario, you can get a 90 degree screwdriver in here if you absolutely had to. Um, so there's no better way in terms of the two, in my opinion. Now we're getting to the main significant difference between the Stromberg 97 and the Holly 94, and that is the power valve circuit. Now, the power valve on the Stromberg 97 is actuated manually through the accelerator pump plunger. When the accelerator pump plunger gets pushed all the way down to where it has no more fuel to enrich the circuit, it opens up the power valve inside this bore and, and, and enriches the circuit even more for when there's more load placed on the engine. You have to actually depress the accelerator to achieve the enrichment. Whereas the Holly 94 power valve, which is right here, actuates on manifold vacuum. Now, when manifold vacuum reaches below seven inches, this valve opens up and enriches the circuit. And this is good for a circumstance where, you, where the engine is experiencing more load, chugging up a hill. It will ultimately do what the Stromberg is doing more automatically as opposed to manually pushing down on the accelerator pedal with the Stromberg. And that's where a lot of issues lie with running multi-carbs. So there you are, there's your power valve down there. And now with the Stromberg, because it's mechanically operated, it's only going to enrich the circuit when you're absolutely to the floor with the gas pedal. Now, because of that, you can kind of avoid it. You know, if you're if you're chugging up a hill, you got three carburetors and you're in, a, you're in a lightweight car like a Model A, the odds of you entering that enrichment circuit are pretty slim. You know, you're not, you're not you're not moving a large vehicle. Whereas with the Holly, because it's reliant on the manifold vacuum, if you start chugging up that hill and you and you reach that seven inches or below, and that power valve on all three carburetors opens up at the same time, you have way more fuel than you need. You start also running into issues if you know these are these are modified engines now you know when you start going into multi-carb scenarios you know the odds of you running a different exhaust um, a different stroke a different bore it's all common one very common thing is to put a high lift cam in the engine now when you put a high lift cam in the engine it affects your vacuum reading you affect your vacuum reading you're going to get all sorts of different signals sent to this power valve and you're going to run into all sorts of issues so when it comes down to it, you know, the Holly, it's 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 a good carburetor. They're they're both they're both so similar. I mean, one's not really that much greater than the other. You know, when when you when you get down to CFM, they're they're so close. I mean, it's all it ultimately comes down to personal preference or what type of, you know, if you're dealing with a hot race engine or if you're dealing with something mild or if you're dealing with something factory stock there's a there's a time and place for everything and a lot of it boils down to personal preference you know i think personally i think these look better but these perform a little better that's just my opinion um but it just boils down to doing your research getting the settings right here's an example of a later holly 94 to show some improvements over the years uh, one of which is an overflow tube uh, in the circumstance of a flood in the bowl 
instead of the fuel spilling out all over your hot engine and ignition wires, uh, it overflows into the throat of the carburetor. And there's also a port for ported vacuum uh, for the sake of running a vacuum assisted advance in your distributor. Now, my setup here on the coupe with the 292Y block is three Holly 94s. Uh, the center carburetor is the primary and the fore and aft carburetors are secondaries. This works a lot like your four barrel carburetor and your later, you know, your, your early small blocks and, and, and on. Whereas the single carburetor works the idle circuit and about from zero to about uh, 30%, 40% throttle, then the secondaries open up. Now, the difference between the center carburetor and the two outboard carburetors is there is no idle circuit and no power valve in the front or back secondaries. Now with this particular setup, it's important to understand because you have your secondaries plugged, you are totally reliant on the power valve only in the primary carburetor. So if you have an experience where you're putting more load on the engine and that power valve opens up, you're getting one power valve for three carburetors. The odds are it's not going to be enough enrichment. And you're going to start the, the engine's going to start to fall on its face. Now this scenario works okay in this particular situation because it's a Model A, it's a lightweight car. I'm not pulling that much weight. So the odds of me being reliant on that power valve are pretty low considering how much fuel I have going into the engine with the three carburetors by themselves. But if this situation was in a big car, a 48 Ford or something similar, you may run into issues where you're gonna need three properly tuned power valves in all three carburetors. Now, one thing you have to think about when rebuilding these carburetors to use is the availability on parts. Parts are way more common to come by with Holley 94 than the Stromberg 97. And that's because Holley has been using the same parts for years. And you can find them at your local auto store, your, uh, your local speed shop, uh, with Stromberg, you have to go with more specific stores, mostly online, to get the right parts that you need. Now, two things you got to consider when you're looking to rebuild cores of old carburetors like the Stromberg 97 or the Holly 94, and that is moisture and man. Man is probably the worst because it always comes down to, you know, old man brings in his truck it's a crank no start scenario and here comes Billy Bob with his persuader and he starts tapping away at the bowl to try and unlock a claw or a stuck needle and seat and before you know it you got all these nick marks on the top of your bowl here and now you're leaking out the sides because the casting is all crunched in you know with no good casting what are you going to do these these are extremely delicate castings now these two in particular are in actually really decent shape. They don't look too abused, but someone could have also over tightened these screws and these ends will flare up and cause leaking in the corners. Again, man, kind of the worst enemy outside of, you know, obvious moisture. Now this is just a little taste on uh, these two common carburetors in traditional hot rods. We'll go into further detail when, in a later video, when we uh, look into cleaning and and proper modification for multi-carbs and so on. But this is just a little introduction to the two most common carburetors that you'll find in traditional hot rodding. Thanks for watching. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm. Mm.